Um, we're setting up the chip and this is just going to do a little quick video on how to redirect brush. Um, let me show you what we got here. I'm pulling in with the winch. This is the tray. We dropped the chipper over here the other day and the ground's a little soft for me to move it with my bucket truck. So I got to move this stuff with the winch to the truck. Problem is the angle of the chute this might be able to spin in uh i'm going to cut that end off of it that's at the split i'll cut that side off of it i'll take the bigger side first and i might be able to manipulate that from the hopper but this is my first and foremost issue right here this piece right here um it's pointing right at the hopper um, what my plan is is to run the line from the hopper of the chipper through that snatch block and then to a piece of the brush over here so that I can pull this back and start turning it sideways. If I can get it turned just enough sideways and move it back just a few feet, in theory that's going to give me what I need to spin it around the rest of the way of the machine and go clean in. So we're going to give that a shot. First thing I'm going to do is clean up a bunch of this little brush and then uh, I'm not even going to bother trying to narrate it as it happens because the audio is just going to be drowned out by the machine once she's idled up. And what I will do is um, I'll do a voiceover for it and uh, that'll, that'll cover us nicely. So at this point I will put on the background music and uh, we'll start with the voiceover. So, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy it. Okay. Um, I'd like to thank, first off, I'd like to thank Artie Norton for the music. And what you're looking at here is I am running the line out from the machine through the snatch block. Now I have to go far enough into this brush where I can grab the top or I'm not going to pull the top apart but I'll still be able to turn it around where I have the leverage and direction what you're going to see me do is take the snatch block off because the line's a little twisted and we don't want the line wrapped in each other this way the lines run true then I'm going to go back to the chipper and I'm going to start pulling this brush away from the machine and hopefully while I'm pulling it away from the machine. It'll be swinging just a little bit crown side towards the right hand side facing away from the, the machine. So I'm starting up the chipper and take the three spool off, just pull it a little bit, get it tight, move it just a little bit so I make sure I'm moving it. Now before I go any further I want to see where it's going. I want to make sure it doesn't go between those two trees. It looks like it's headed right towards them. And if it does, I can't go too far. I can't get it out. I got to check to see if I'll be able to get the cable underneath once I get in there and the ground rises. So that looks good. Um, you never really want to have to fight to get underneath your brush. And if that's the case, then I put a chain under it and pull it onto a chain first. Now we're going to fire up the machine. Uh, if you've ever done any chipping with these bigger brush bandits um, actually any chipper you know that with with a winch you know that anything in the hopper just makes it more difficult to get the feed wheels to grab and it's just so much easier if you always have a clean workspace especially at the mouth of the machine so we're going to chip that off we are going to swap over to cable pull it a couple of feet now it was already about four or five degrees off directly at the machine. It's now about eight, which ought to be just enough to pull it over so we can drop it out of the snatch block. Go get the clevis end and put it on the butt. Usually I like to go about a foot away from the butt end. That gives me a piece that's going to come in and I'll be able to lift it up onto the hopper without it prematurely shooting underneath the hopper so I have to cut the end off of it. Um, that one's probably about 18 inches uh, away from the butt but I do have a good amount of area to swing so we're gonna see how it goes and if you have to you just 
redo it. You know, you just reset your line. Now this swung nicely. It's coming right in, but you see how far in I am? That's not good. Oh, and those metal clips I left on the stoop there would have really sucked if they got hung up on the brush and I chipped them. That would have been bad news. But all I'm going to do here is use the winch to lift the log up onto a block like so and now I can move the line up closer to the end this way it doesn't shoot underneath the hopper when I swing it around and the closer the end you are the closer the log can be when you lift it into the hopper put it down pull the line out stretch the line to pull it in uh, it's pretty straightforward stuff putting it out on that end and pull it into the hopper now I'm going to put it in the feed wheels and I am going to grab my brush breaking saw. Sometimes you do, even with the machine this big, you will get some brush that's too big to for the machine to break. So I always try and break it before I'm in trouble with a brushing saw. I use an MS250, we call it the Fisher Price saw, but it's small, 16 inch bar, it's light, it cuts what you need to cut, and it fits in the hopper nicely, and that's kind of important when you have a lot of angle cutting to do. So away goes one end, I'll just stretch the line again and pull the other end in. Uh, I want to say that that one was about 10 inches at the butt. This one is about 7 inches at the butt. And the whole thing was probably about 30, 35 feet long. Um, that's why I like to use a big machine. What you're watching here is one guy clean up a whole crown of a 65 foot tall soft maple by himself and with all the brush chipping took me about 20 minutes and that's with stopping to film and cleaning everything up as I went. Okay, well, I idle the machine down, hit the free spool. Now we're gonna go out. I took a better look at this secondary piece and I decided rather than just spin it, I'm gonna pull it about eight feet, 10 feet towards that snatch block. So I'm going around it underneath it where I can reach it. Uh, again, that's still a bit deeper in than I like. Put it on the snatch block. And now this is facing away from the hopper of the machine when you're at the machine, facing back towards the brush. This is going to be pulling it to the right, so it's more centered on my hopper. Okay. And idle up and pull. You can see the whole thing moving over right up to the block. Drop it down. Now when I spin it, it's going to spin to the hopper of the machine. Okay, again, now that the machine's idle up, I'm just going to get rid of the brush that's in the mouth. Now I'm going to come back here. And all I have to do at this point, drop from the snatch block and head back to the machine. Pull it into the machine. Yep, throw the brush in. Okay, we're going to pull it right into the machine. Super easy. Up and in, drop it, extend the line so that I can get it into the feed wheels. And this is all pretty basic stuff. It's basically, I wanted to just point out the spinning of the brush and re-manipulation using a snatch block. Okay, it's in the feed wheels. Again, I don't want to have to fight anything. Get out the old Fisher Price saw. Break that. See, a lot. I try and break these if, if I can, so that I don't have to refeed. It's just so that the uh, crotch breaks easier when it gets into the feed wheels. And then we're going to turn you on to regular speed for the feed so you can see how long it takes. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Got something you want to teach me? Feel free to leave a comment. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.